just what is the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel chapter 9. This is part one of a three-part series. We've been working through the Antichrist series, and we've come down to Daniel 9, where we find the prince that will come, which is a type of the Antichrist, but we need, before we look at that, to understand what the 70 weeks prophecy is. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner, and let's move on in this study. Okay, just an overview. In Daniel chapter 9, there's a prophecy of 70 weeks. 70 weeks, it's the angel Gabriel addressing this to Daniel. 70 weeks of your people and your holy city. It's directed toward Daniel's people and the holy city, which is Jerusalem, to finish a transgression, make an end to sins, make reconciliation for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and prophecy, anoint the most holy. All things that we already look at, we say, well, this has to point to Jesus Christ, which it does. And we're going to look at that. But the first 69 weeks are divided into two pieces. There's seven weeks and there's 62 weeks. And this is that time that the street and the wall of Jerusalem and Jerusalem as a city will be built again. And these 69 weeks will feature troubled times. And we're going to look at, in the next part, the difference between seven and 62 weeks. And this is an important part of the prophecy. And then we finally get to the 70th week. The 70th week, which is a very famous part of Scripture. Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. The Messiah is cut off, but not for himself. That's going to take us right to the cross. The covenant is confirmed for one week. The people of the prince to come, and that prince to come is a symbol for the Antichrist, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will be with a flood. Wars and desolations are determined. In the middle of that week, when the Antichrist rises, the, the sacrifice and oblation will end, it'll cease, and there'll be an overspreading of abominations which cause desolation, even up to the end. So we're going to look at all of this in these three parts, but let's go ahead and look now at Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Okay, first we have to understand that these 70 weeks which are determined has a symbolic meaning. Many people want to just literalize and say, well, the 70 weeks are 490 weeks, 490 years. But we find difficulties with that, that that really can't be done. And when we look at that word week in the Hebrew, it literally means to seven. It's seven, and it's usually translated as a week of seven days, but not always. So, but usually it, it is that seven day period of time. And we immediately you understand the number seven is the number of perfection of purpose whether good or bad and we've looked at that before in other videos in our revelation study for example in revelation we see seven churches seven spirits seven candlesticks seven seals angels trumpets thunders but we also see seven heads on that scarlet beast so it's not only the uh, number of good it's also a number of bad the seven plagues balls mountains and kings and we see that perfection of purpose, whether it's good or bad. For example, wisdom has hewn out her seven pillars. It's a symbolic number. Wisdom doesn't actually have pillars. It's, it's, it's a symbolic meaning. The pillars of truth. The seven is the perfection of purpose of God's truth. Seven times a day do I praise you. Well, we should all be praising God all day long, but it's a symbolic number. Proverbs 26, when he speaks graciously, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Again, the number seven is the number of perfection of purpose. Now we need to look at the number 70. The number 70, first we have to understand that the number 10 throughout the Bible points to the number of fullness. So when we look at the number 70, it becomes the perfect purpose fully implemented. And that's exactly what we see in the 70 weeks prophecy, because it's going to take us all the way to the last day. It's a prophecy from Gabriel to Daniel, but it's going to span that whole time from the 6th century BC all the way to the end of the world. And we see other uses of 70. For example, the 70 years of Babylonian captivity, it was the perfect purpose of God, which was fully implemented in the Bab Babylonian captivity of Judah. Genesis 53, the Egyptians mourned for Joseph 70 days. Psalm 90, verse 10, 70 years are appointed for man to live. 
Numbers 11, Moses appointed 70 elders to judge. The 70 sons of Gideon, the 70 souls of Jacob that came out of Egypt. All these numbers 70 are pointing to the perfect purpose that was fully implemented. So let's now, now go on and look at the 70 weeks, the 77s in a little bit more detail. When we look at the symbolic meaning of 77s, we find help. We find help in Matthew 18 because there's a passage that says the same thing. Matthew 18, Peter came to Christ and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? How often do I have to keep forgiving him? Till seven times? But Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. And that obviously is pointing to the fact that we never ever are done forgiving. We don't have a limit to our forgiveness of our, br our brother if we're a cr if Christian. So when we look at the 77s and we consider Daniel chapter 9 and the prophecy that goes all the way into eternity, we see that it's a symbol. It's a symbolic number of the never-ending fullness of God's perfection of purpose all the way through time, all the way into eternity. It's all pointing to his salvation and his son, Jesus Christ. As expected, there are many varying beliefs about this 70-week prophecy. When we are going to look at this 70-week prophecy, it's from the 6th century BC all the way up to the last day and eternity, because it's to bring in everlasting righteousness. It's a beautiful panoramic vision of prophecy. But of course, there's many erroneous beliefs, especially about the, the, the first six weeks, 69 weeks, Many people just try to spend a lot of time pointing how this how this points to the to the Messiah, the the baptism of Christ when he became the Messiah, and they try to work out these 483 years between the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Christ, and there's all type of problems that they come up with that, and all type of varying angles, and it never quite works out correctly. And then on the 70th week, many people, some people think it's already completed, it's done, it's history. But many other, the premillennialists, think that it only applies to Israel. It's in the future. It's after the rapture of Christians. Yeah, the Antichrist is featured in there, but it's after the rapture. You don't have to really worry about it. That's for a future national Israel that will have to deal with that. So we want to understand, though, the correct teaching about the 70 weeks. It has a beautiful spiritual meaning. So let's move on in this study. And we know that the 70 weeks prophecy cannot be a literal 490 years, 70 times 7. And even these teachers that teach the 483, they usually say that's literal, but then the last seven weeks are not literal. And that the reason that it's not literal is because we know that the word to restore and build Jerusalem went out in the 6th century BC. And, and we know that the seventh week has to do with the advent of Jesus Christ that the Messiah is cut off, but not for himself. And the middle of the 70th week, we know it's the prince to come, which is the tied to the abomination of desolation right in Daniel 9. And we know that's the great tribulation. We've, we've studied that several times. And we see it goes, but it goes all the way to the end of the 70th week, which is the last day. Daniel 9, 26 and 27. The end, the end thereof shall be with a flood. And again, that's a symbolic meaning. And unto the end, war desolations are determined. The church is desolated all the way up to the last day, even until the con consummation, which is the end. And that is determined to be poured up out upon the desolate. And that has to do with judgment day, the last day. The bottom line is that 70 weeks is not a literal time period, but also that six, the seven weeks and the 62 weeks they're also not literal either. And we're going to look at that in the next part, in the next video. But let's continue on in this study. Okay, and we see that this prophecy has to do with Daniel's people and Daniel's holy city, which is Jerusalem. We see in Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city. And again, 70 is a symbolic number. It's the 77s is the never-ending, complete fulfillment of the God's perfect purpose. And we see, interestingly, Daniel 9, there's the angel Gabriel is speaking this to Daniel. And the angel Gabriel, by the way, 
the only other context he shows up in the New Testament is the advent of Christ. And it's no surprise that he's given him this prophecy. But this prophecy is by and large pointing to Christ. Daniel 9.20, when I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel. This has to do with Daniel's people, which is Israel. And Israel, of course, again, it's symbolic of God's people. And I'll tag this slide, but we've done studies on this before. Israel is symbolic. It, it, Jesus Christ is Israel. It's, it's, he's the Prince of God. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Romans 9, 6. He is not a Jew which was one, one outwardly in the flesh. He is a Jew which was inwardly. And it's by that circumcision of the Spirit. Romans chapter 2. Jerusalem is a symbol of the location of God's people. The literal Jerusalem today is, is not important. It's not, it's the Jerusalem we know in the Bible, it's symbolic of where God's people dwell. It's a spiritual place and it's a holier set apart city. Now we're going to look at, in Daniel 9.24, there are six things in that verse that show us that these 70 weeks, the 70 weeks prophesy, prophecy goes from the 6th century BC and it spans all the way up to the last day and into eternity because we're going to see everlasting righteousness. So Daniel 9.24, first of these six, is to finish the transgression. And what in the world does transgression mean? In the Hebrew, it literally means a revolt. A revolt. It's a rebellion from God. So what is the rebellion from God? And we know that anything, God's people are in harmony with God because they're saved. They have the Holy Spirit. But everybody else, there's a lot of people in this world that are not Christian, they're not of God's people, they're in revolt to God. They're part of Satan's kingdom. They're, they're in revolt. They're following the world. They're following worldliness. So we see that this transgression is going to go all the way up to the last day. And we see in Isaiah 24 that the same word transgression is used there, a rebellion. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. At that last day, the world is so far away from God. There's so many people in this world. There's so many rebellion and things that are not right in this world. And it shall fall and shall not rise again. It's judgment day. The earth itself will fall because it'll be destroyed to usher in the new heavens and the new earth. So we see that this finish of transgression points all the way up to the last day, which is judgment day. We also see in Daniel 9.24, it's to make an end to sin. To make an end to sin. And we see in Hebrews chapter 9, but now once in the end of the world has Christ, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. God's people's sins are put away. In the flesh, we're not perfect by any means. By any means, but in the spirit, we're made holy. Holy in Christ. But we see that the world's sins are still there and up to the last day and we see when new jerusalem comes in on that last day when there's judgment day new jerusalem there should be in no wise enter into it anything that defiles neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie but they which are written in the lamb's book of life it'll be a time of perfect peace and perfect righteousness the sin will be ended in eternity it'll be ended on that last day again Matthew 13, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things, all things that offend and then which do iniquity. All sin will come to an end on that last day, judgment day. Okay, and we also see in the 70 weeks, there will be reconciliation for iniquity. And guess what that means? We see in Daniel 9.24, reconciliation. Iniquity, by the way, in Daniel 9.24 literally means perverseness. To be perverse, to be different, to be contrary to the word of God. And when we look at Malachi 2, 6, the law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from their iniquity. There's going to be a reconciliation for iniquity in Christ. And we as Christians experience that, that our sins are reconciled. Then literally that word in the Hebrew means to be atoned. 
You that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, he is now reconciled. We're reconciled because we're born again in the spirit. We have a, we're become a new man. Yes, the flesh still sins, but in the spirit we're made completely righteous, righteous in Christ, awaiting the redemption of the body on that last day. Romans 5, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement to become back at one and reconciled to, to God. We also see that, and this is, is such an obvious one, the 70 weeks will result in bringing in everlasting righteousness. Righteousness, holiness, to be without sin. That's what eternity will be like. Psalm 97, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. That'll be on the last day and in eternity. Psalm 98, before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth with righteousness, shall he judge the world and the people with equity. He comes to judge, he comes with righteousness. There is a right and there's a wrong. There's a truth and there's a lie and all the lies and the unrighteous things will be done away with. Psalm 94, but judgment shall return unto righteousness and all the upright in heart shall follow it. All the upright in heart will be all of those who are God's people for eternity. The 70 weeks, this prophecy brings in everlasting righteousness. Okay, another one. During these 70 weeks, we see the 70 weeks are determined to seal up the vision and prophecy. When we see visions, and they're all through the Bible, visions are a, a symbolic meaning. There's something a prophet or another child of God saw, and, and this was during the, the creation of the Bible. They're not for today anymore. People don't get visions from God, but they were given to the prophets, the apostles and the prophets, but they all had a symbolic meaning. They had symbolism. We see this all through the book of Revelation. We see all this all through the, the, the book of Daniel. And it has to do with symbolic meanings of things to come. Prophecy is speaking of future things. But the key thing in this passage is that they are sealed. Sealed, just as... Christians are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. A seal represents a guarantee. It's a guarantee that these visions and prophecy, these future events will happen. People read it and they know that there's a last day coming. Or they know there's a great tribulation coming, but sometimes they waver. But they're a guarantee because God gave these visions to the prophets and the apostles. And again, they're not for people today. If people say they saw a vision today, it's not from God. But to the apostles and prophets, they had these visions and these prophecies. We see in Daniel 12, 4, oh, Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book, guarantee the book, even to the time of the end. This Bible has lasted all the way up to the end time, where all the things that are written in the Bible will come to pass. Okay, 70 weeks also includes the anointing of the Most Holy. The anointing of the Most Holy. And, and this people have stumbled around with, and that word most holy in the Hebrew, it's the word holy, holy, or holy of holies. And it's translated often as most holy, because it's that which is holy of the holy. And when we look at the most holy places and things in the Old Testament, we see the, that the inner sanctuary of the temple and the tabernacle, where it was where the Ark of the Covenant was located, because it was the most holy place. The altar of burnt offering. And again, all, all these things are going to point to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the most holy. Because he's God himself. The anointing oil placed before the Ark of the Testimony. The, grain, the meat offerings. They were most holy. The sin, the trespass offerings, the showbread. All the things he's pointing to Christ. Because they were most holy. We see in particular, and I'll tag this slide. Because we've done a video on the Ark of the Covenant. Which is really un important to understand the symbolic meaning of the Ark of the Covenant. But it was in the most holy place. We recall from Hebrews 9, after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the most holy or holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded in the tables of the covenant. All these things had to do with pointing to Christ. And we can summarize the spiritual meaning of the Ark of the Covenant. And again, this is on that tagged video. It's the presence of God in the glory of his covenant of grace and mercy through the witness and offering of the word of God, which is none other than Jesus Christ. 
God himself. And that's what the Most Holy is pointing to. The temple. The temple is a most holy place because it's the dwelling place of God. It's Christ's body. Christ's body is referred to as a temple. So we see that when this anointing happens of the Holy of Holies or the Most Holy, we understand that the anointing, it literally means rub with oil, and it has its roots in the word Christ, the Messiah, the, the anointed one. Jesus Christ is the anointed one. The word Christ, the word Messiah, has to do with anointing. That's why the anointed is most holy. Jesus Christ was anointed. Acts 10.38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. Christians, Christians are in that, are in Christ. We're in the body of Christ. We're in Christ, that anointed, that most holy one. Because we're in the temple. We're in the house. We're in the body of Christ. We are in Christ. Romans 12, we being many are one body in Christ. And every one members of one of another. And again, the temple, the house, I put a bunch of verses here you can look at. And I'll tag the slide with our, our, our study on anointing and Christ and Messiah. But we also see that Christians, by virtue, by virtue of being in Jesus Christ, we are anointed. We are not anointed separate from Christ. We are anointed in him. The Lord is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That anointing process where God's people are still being saved, being anointed with the Holy Spirit will happen right up to the last day. And that's why the anointed of the most holy place continues right up to the last day. Okay, just a quick summary. This is the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel 9. This has been part one. There's two more parts coming up, so please can subscribe. The 70 weeks, weeks literally means sevens. Most of the time, it is a literal seven day week when it's talked about in the Bible, but not every time. 77s, it's symbolic in Daniel 9 because it's prophecy. It's a vision. It's symbol of the never-ending fullness of God's perfection of purpose up to the last day from the 6th century when the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem all the way to the last day and eternity. We looked at the overview in 924 to finish the transgression. That happens on Judgment Day. Make an end to sin is on Judgment Day. The reconciliation or the atonement for iniquity points to the cross and, and Jesus Christ. Everlasting righteousness and eternity. Seal up vision and prophecy. All prophecy is guaranteed to occur all the way up to the last day in eternity. To anoint the most holy is pointing to Christ and Christians who are in Christ. It's a beautiful picture of salvation and eternity. So next video we're going to look at is what in the world are those seven and 62 weeks. They have symbolic meanings. It's a total of 69 weeks. They all have symbolic meanings. We're going to look at that in the next video. Please consider subscribing and thank you very much for watching this video.